What's going on guys? So uh, today I want to talk about some gear that I found uh, going through my junk drawer. All right, Most of you guys are familiar with a junk drawer. Uh, essentially it's a drawer that's somewhere in your house. Could be a, a desk drawer, um, could be you know a kitchen drawer. In my case when I was growing up it was always a kitchen drawer uh, that had just a bunch of random doodads in it. Just random crap. Whether it originally started as a tool drawer or something uh, who knows maybe your junk drawer is not a drawer itself maybe it's a box that's in the closet it's just somewhere where you just you have things that don't have a necessarily a place you know what i mean it's just things that accumulate in one particular spot and and you know it's junk quote junk because you're not currently using it uh, but usually you find some treasures if you go and revisit your junk drawers and that's what i did so i went through my junk drawer and uh, i found this stuff so I figured I would uh, talk about it a little bit. Some is very straightforward, like this little key knife, um, just kind of cool. At some point it has some of my keys, I no longer do. Looks like it put off, probably give this to someone for free in a trade or something. So there was that. I found a random uh, spoon knife for bushcrafting. If you've never seen one of these, this is called a spoon knife. It's double-edged and obviously it has a curve in the blade. And the idea here is like, you know, if you want to hollow out something, you would use this almost like a spoon and you would shave out, you know, the, the you know indentation of anything. Could be a spoon, that's again why it's called spoon knife, could be a bowl, anything that's gonna have any kind of indentation, this is the proper cutting tool to use for that. Of course, this one has some surface rust. It's still fairly sharp, but I'm gonna touch this up and who knows, maybe I'll maybe I'll make another wooden spoon. That's always a fun bushcraft project. Um then I have of course this little uh, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> we, we all know what it is. I guess you'd call it a paperweight. Uh, but yeah, I found that. I got that in a trade at some point. Just kind of put it off to the side. It's kind of fun to revisit. Um, then I have uh, a set of security Torx bits. If you've ever had, I mean, not necessarily in knives. You, it's kind of rare to see these in knives, but they do have them. That's originally why I got this. Um, but basically, they are Torx bits that have a hollow center. And that's because there's some Torx heads that have a post in the middle. They're called security Torx because you can't use a regular Torx bit. It won't go in because of the post. So that's why you have these. It's a little bit more advanced. Um, sometimes you'll see these types of screw heads in bathroom stalls. So if you go in the public bathroom, usually those stalls are put together with, I mean, much larger than these, but they're large security Torx. So the average person may not have the tool to you know, go in there and start taking apart the, <laughs> the bathroom in, in public. Um, but yeah, that's that's that. They certainly come in handy, so I'm gonna put that back with my regular tool stuff. And speaking of tools, this little screwdriver. Some people might have this screwdriver out there. It's kind of it's an older design. I can't tell you how many times I've actually used this, and it's got me out of a pinch where I just am really in a tight spot, and I just can't get to something. Uh, just really really cool. It's a ratcheting screwdriver. All right, obviously Phillips on one side, and this top is a uh, flathead. So I zoom in to show you that. All right, it does ratchet, so it goes both ways. All right, you flip that back over, especially if you're flipping it over. It's obviously going to ratchet the opposite direction, so this would be loosening. And then you would flip that over to tighten. But yeah, I mean, it's just, like I said, super, super handy. It doesn't look like you would use this for anything. Like, I'll just use a regular screwdriver. Yeah, I said that too, and that's why this ended up in a junk drawer at some point. But there was at least one uh, occasion that I remember specifically trying to find this because I needed this to get into something that was uh, tight that I could not uh, reach with a regular screwdriver. And I couldn't find it, and it was in the junk drawer. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, the pink knife. Yes, do you guys remember this? This is a QSP knife. Um, when QSP... Stay... All right, when QSP uh, kind of first hit the scene, when I first heard about them, I don't know if this is one of their first models or not, but when they were new to me, um, I got this knife to try. It was a very simple design. It's comfortable and everything. And I used it, and it created a lot of blade play. Some of you guys have watched me for a long time probably remember this knife. Um, I actually contacted QSP. I told them, hey, you know, I, I've used your knife. I know it's not a very expensive knife, but that's not right. It, it, there's a lot of up and down play. It just should not be like that. And they were really, really cool about it. They sent me out uh, two black ones in, uh, in exchange. So sorry. And they revamped the design. I used one of the black ones really hard. And it didn't create any play anymore. So they actually listened to me as a company. All right. A customer said, hey, 
um, this is not working out. And they said, oh, we're going to look at it. And they did. They fixed it. And I have a black one. I still have it today. That works very well. So I threw this in the junk drawer because it was just a knife that I didn't care about. I figured I can use extra hard if it breaks, whatever, you know, that kind of a knife. And it's still kicking. I mean, like I said, it's got quite a bit of play in there, but it still works. I still sharpen the edge, and it's a, it's a functional knife. And I, I think still maybe my only pink knife. So there's that. Then there's this thing. Who remembers this? I'm just going to show it to you real quick. There was some glue on it. I don't know what happened. Some stuff got stuck to it. This is from way back in the day, all right, from Countycom. This is a pocket grappling hook. So you unscrew the top, all right, inside you have your little spikes, all right. And let me put these down. Of course, they're going to roll off the table. So you have your little uh, spikes here, all right, and these get screwed in. They have a little O-ring on the bottom, so it can be nice and tight and they don't back out very easily. Of course, you have your three, and this turns into a, a grappling hook that you can use for all kinds of stuff, mostly retrieving things. Uh, this is obviously not something you're going to be able to climb up a wall with. It's not going to support any body weight, but you screw that bottom cap back on. All right, you would tie some paracord through here or whatever kind of cordage you want. All right, let me zoom in so you can see this. And yeah, and you can use this as a grappling hook. This is great for, I actually used this once when I dropped something in the, uh, the pond. Um, I actually had a, what was it, a swim bait or something. And I was going through my tackle box and I dropped it in the water right off the dock. And uh, I ended up fishing this out. Literally used fishing line. Uh, this wasn't with me. Uh, I should keep it in my tackle box for, for that purpose. But I didn't have it with me. I actually got it the next day. Um, I had this one and I had a larger one too. But it's just really cool. You can, again, if you can use it to grab things. If you, I don't know, let's say there's a half dead branch in a tree, you could throw it up in there or wrap around and stick into the tree and, you know, yank that off. There's, I mean, there's a million things you could probably use this for. But really, really random uh, tool <laughs> that I just, I, it, again, ended up in the junk drawer because I just wasn't using it. No place to put it, right? So we're left with a couple interesting things here. We got a couple pen lights. This one's from Radio Shack. What makes this kind of kind of cool there's a momentary I think you screw it down for a constant on um, the batteries were dead in here and when I opened it up to see what kind of batteries it took guess what it took triple or excuse me quadruple A's three of them all right here's the original and I thought where am I gonna get quadruple A's oh that's right I did buy quadruple A's two of them two Duracells um, for my Zippo project. Remember I'm still trying to get that Zip light, that original one fixed. Turns out the 4A batteries were not the solution. But they didn't go to waste. They went into this uh, little pen light. As you can see it's branded Radio Shack here but it's actually a Streamlight stylus. Very cool. And you know maybe uh, not so popular these days because I mean it really is not putting out a whole lot of light. Obviously it hasn't been made for a long time. But still, very functional. I think that's really cool. I had that in my range bag for a long time. Then I found this other um, pen style light. This is by Rayovac. This is really old. Uh, just clicks on, clicks off. All right, there is an LED in there, but it's a very warm white LED, which is actually really cool. Um, this takes some AAA batteries. It's super simple, like on the back. I'll take it out real quick. If you unscrew this, you see we have our two batteries, and then the, the light is literally just an insert. All right, so we just have our, our LED, right, that's attached to, um, you know, the actual, the base for it. So you're just completing a very simple circuit. You're just putting that into the light, all right, your two batteries, and the back has the spring, completes the circuit. Once you uh, click the button down, let's screw that on, make sure that's, there we go, nice and tight. All right, and just click it on, turn it on. Click it off, breaks the circuit. Really simple, again, not very impressive overall with the light output compared to what we have today, but a cool throwback, and it works. That's what matters, right? It works. Then I have this light. Now this flashlight is extremely old. I carried this on my keys, I wanna say, when I was in like high school. Um, it is very, very old, all right? It does not work, I do need a battery for it. This actually takes a very unique battery. Oh my God, it's on, I can't believe it. 
Oh my god, I didn't even notice that. So there is a little bit of juice left, right? As I turn that, you can see this does have a red LED in it. It's not projecting any light at all though, so it's just barely, barely lit. But here, check out this battery. Now I did look this up, I can buy the batteries again, which is cool. They actually go in some different fishing, fishing things. Alright, it's like $4 for this battery, but I think I will replace it. Have you ever seen a battery like that before? Alright. So, 3 volt lithium battery. It's a BR435. BR435. That's a funky looking battery. Could not be smaller, right? So, yeah. That is that. Put that back on here. Let me back up the camera. We got one more thing here, which is a, a dumb impulse purchase. Uh, back when... I I ordered those uh, Bud K knives, the mystery knives, if you remember that video. Um, I ordered this too. This is <laughs> this is a secret compartment, um, you know, that's supposed to be disguised as the cigarette lighter inside of a car. Now, first of all, it's 2020. Uh, no new cars even have a cigarette port anymore. That they have what looks like a cigarette port. It's just for the car chargers. All right, it is different. Um, so this basically just unscrews, all right, and you have a little stash thing in here, but you can put whatever you want. Uh, you can put your diamonds in there. I assume some people put their crack in there, <laughs> their weed in there. Um, you know, it's not big enough for change. Uh, I just thought it was cool. I actually had no specific reason to get this. Uh, I just wasn't using the lighter in my truck, which by the way, I will do an update in the truck in the future. It's really just been sitting since the last update. Um, and I'm probably going to sell it. So we'll talk about that in the future. But yeah, I wanted to put this in the truck and it turned out that it was just a little bit too small. This is a little bit of a smaller diameter than the regular, you know, actual lighter that goes inside vehicles. So it was just flopping around. It was loose. I didn't like it. So I took it out. So I bought this for like five bucks and it was a total waste of money. And um, it just went to a junk drawer. Just one of those things. I'm going to give this away again in a trade or something. You know, maybe it's something someone else wants. But yeah, that's it. That is a bunch of stuff in my junk drawer that I revisited and thought was kind of cool. Uh, all the stuff will go other places. Obviously, the tools will go with my tool stuff. Um, you know, like, like I said, the grappling hook. This might go off for trade. I don't have a specific purpose for it. I know other people might like it more than uh, I'm going to actually use the thing. You know? So anyway, just thought I'd uh, share that randomly. Some junk drawer stuff. Uh, I kind of wanted to open the topic of junk drawers, you know, number one, do you have a junk drawer? I feel like everyone does, even if you don't recognize you have a junk drawer, you have one somewhere. Uh, but number two, I want to hear stories of like, did you ever lose anything only to find that it magnetized to that junk drawer? It's like you knew you had it, you couldn't find it anywhere. I mean, that is specifically what happened with this tool. I just, I just couldn't find it anywhere because I didn't look where it was, which was a junk drawer. So it's good every now and again to clean those junk drawers out. You find some old stuff you like, you might revisit it and, and uh, have a use for it, you know, at a later time. So anyway, let me know your junk drawer stories down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch the video. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys tomorrow if you come back, because guess what? I'll have a brand new video. I make one new every single day. So see you guys tomorrow. Take care.